Jeff Myron is not your typical cannabis advocate, but this Harvard economics professor with a libertarian bent has found that the prohibition on marijuana is as costly as it is senseless. You recently conducted a study on the legalization of marijuana, and what did you find? So this study looked at what had happened in the four states that have so far legalized marijuana under their state laws, and we basically found that nothing happened. That is, that rates of drug use, alcohol use, other drug use, traffic safety, crime rates, emergency room episodes, all of the outcomes that people tend to think of as being strongly, as likely to be affected by legalization were minimally affected. A few go up a little, a few go down a little relative to their pre-existing trends, but overall there's just not much change in any aspect uh, of those states. And how detrimental has the prohibition been? Well, prohibition of all drugs has done huge amounts of damage in terms of increasing crime rates, in terms of infringing civil liberties and exacerbating racial tensions, in terms of reducing the health of people who use drugs because they're getting them in a, in a black market rather than a legal market where they know what dosage they're getting. Uh, it's had significant effects in breeding insurrection in other countries that are supplier countries for drugs such as Colombia, Peru, Afghanistan. And it's cost billions and billions and billions of dollars uh, on top of the fact that it's having all these negative effects with minimal impact on drug use. In the state of Massachusetts, question four is on the ballot. Is there anything in the bill that makes you nervous as an economist? Well, overall, I certainly support the bill. It does the right thing of legalizing marijuana. Somewhat unfortunately, although I understand why, it comes with a lot of regulation and taxation and a lot of additional things other than just saying marijuana is now legal. The ideal bill, in my view, would simply take an eraser to every place in the Massachusetts State Code that uses the word marijuana and erase that word. We don't need new commissions, we don't need all sorts of new complicated regulations and policy around marijuana, but that's probably the price of the political compromise to convince more people to accept legalization. And what do you think the financial implications of the bill are if it is to pass? The bill will end up probably raising 20 to 40 million dollars per year in marijuana tax revenues. It may imply some additional expenditure for all this regulatory apparatus. Again, in my view, that regulatory apparatus is a waste of money, so we really should just take the extra revenues okay, and be happy with that rather than spending it in ways that are not very productive. The bill also provides the opportunity to reduce criminal justice expenditure on making marijuana arrests and incarcerations and so on and so forth. Now, those expenditures are not huge anymore in a state like Massachusetts, um, and I don't expect to see a big reduction in expenditure, but we can at least reprioritize police toward going after other kinds of crimes rather than worrying about marijuana uh, prohibition crimes. And what would you say to the concerned parent that's worried that this will increase access for their kids? I think that that concern is understandable but misplaced. Kids report consistently in surveys that they already have access. In fact, they find it easier to get access to marijuana than to alcohol, which makes sense because current legal alcohol sellers know that they can get punished by the regulation if they sell to underage kids. Of course, some do it anyway, but at least they have a clear incentive not to want to do it very much or very often because they'll be caught and get punished. A black market seller of marijuana or any other drug is not really worried about getting caught for selling to underage kids. They're just trying not to get caught in the activity at all. Once marijuana distribution is legal, those legal distributors will be more likely to want to comply with regulation like minimum purchase ages. So if anything, the regulation is going to make it better, make it easier for the law to keep marijuana away from teenagers and other underage youth. In short, what would your message be for the voters this, uh, this fall in all of the states where legalization or medical is up for uh, on the ballot? The message have a few pieces. First, the potential risks to health and driving safety and things like that from marijuana are, if anything, substantially less than those of alcohol. So if you believe that on net it's better to have alcohol be legal than illegal, then you should obviously draw the same conclusion about marijuana. Second, all the evidence suggests that moving from the current illegal regime to a legal regime has very minor effects on use, on crime, on traffic safety, and so on. So the scare stories that the prohibitionists promulgate, that we will see some mushrooming of use, that we'll see everybody be an addict, is completely unsupported by the evidence. 
Uh, finally, prohibition has all these ancillary costs, exacerbating racial tensions, crime, corruption, more overdoses, and so on. And so even though it's not perfect, legalization is far better than prohibition. Fantastic. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Thank you.